This is the corresponding calibration curve with a range of linearity between 0.1 and 100 micrograms per milliliter, which is adequate for the determination of this molecule at the clinically relevant concentration in plasma samples upon dilution and appropriate dilution of the sample. And the limit of detection was 58 nanograms per milliliter. And this is very interesting because we compare the performance of the nanohorse based immunosensor with that obtained uh, by mobilizing with an, with an identical uh, protocol fibrinogen, but in the in, in step of carbon nanohorse on commercially available carboxylated carbon nanotubes. Mm -hmm. And these figures show histograms obtained for the signal to non-specific, when I say non-specific, I mean without fibrinogen immobilized, ratios for both type of biosensors at three different concentration level of fibrinogen. And it's easily apparent that while at the carbon nanohorse based immunosensor, the responses, this, this ratio, allows differentiation, allows discrimination of the three different concentration levels when using the immunosensor constructed with carbon nanotubes did not allow that discrimination for the, low for the lower concentration of fibrinogen. That is, a better limit of detention was achievable when the immunosensor constructed with carbon nanohorse. And this is probably due to the form in which the carbon nanohorns uh, are synthesized. Because we use a mild and short in time oxidation process with hydrogen peroxide solution. And that open holes at the cone end of carbon nanohorns, but avoid the shortening of these carbon nanohorns. On the contrary, the tip opening with carbon nanotubes is currently made with very harsh condition using strong acids, reflux, ultrasonication, and long reaction times, when as many of you will know, produce the breaking of the long initial carbon nanotubes into shorter pieces. Uh, pieces. Let's pass to another example. That's quite okay. Then, Development of electrochemical biosensor with this kind of improved analytical performance is currently expedited by the preparation of novel nanostructure surfaces based on the use of hybrids nanomaterial with very well-defined properties. It's evident, all of you know, that graphene is one of the most promising nanomaterials, but the high hydrophobicity and the absence of chemical functionalities on graphene restrains its direct application in many bioanalytical applications. It is true that graphene and graphene oxide nanoshoots can be easily provided with hydrophilic and reactive chemical functionalities either by chemical and supramolecular modifications. But this kind of modification should be carefully controlled because they can produce an excessive damage to the electrical and conductive properties of the carbon acid tubes. Therefore, the synthesis of highly soluble and reactive graphene-based hybrid derivatives with low modification of the carbonous surface is highly desired. So this goal can be achieved by grafting graphene or graphene oxide nanoshoots with water-soluble polymers. Water-soluble polymers bearing reacting, reactive and hydrophilic chemical groups. And what I'm going to, sh to do now is to show you some uh, few strategies in this direction with the overall goal to prepare, in this case, electrochemical enzyme biosensors. Which is the general strategy? The general strategy is displayed here. We start with graphene oxides, uh, nanoshoots, and we attach silane, we functionalize this graphene oxide with silane groups bearing primary amino, epoxy, or thiol chemical groups. 
and using the surface hydrosyl groups as anchoring points for this silanization. Then this silanized graphene oxide derivative can be modified, functionalized, and reduced with either polymers, we'll see a couple of examples, or previously decorated with gold nanoparticles, which were then used to functionalize with the corresponding polymer. Which is the first example? The first example is the functionalization and reduction of silanized graphene oxide with Appaman for generation dendrimer. This is a soft nanomaterial with a high density of primary amino groups on the surface, which favor the multipoint cross-linking of this nanomaterial with the activated silanized graphene oxide sheets. This hybrid nanomaterial exhibited a cam crumpled paper-like morphology, as it can be uh, observed in this transmission electron microscopy images. Um, probably as a consequence of this multipoint functionalization of graphene oxide shoots with the um, PAMAN dendrimer. So this crumpling can be made, this morphology can be formed by crumpling and folding of a single nanoshoot of, or by association of different nanostructure to form larger structures. This hybrid nanomaterial was used as a coating material of a glassy carbon electrode, and the modified glassy carbon electrode was employed as support for the covalent immobilization of a model enzyme such as thyroxinase. And you can see here, cyclic voltammograms obtained with this tyrosinase biosensor upon different additions of catechol at increasing concentration. And as you can see, there is an increase in the cathodic current corresponding to the electrochemical reduction of one, two benzoquinone molecules generated in the enzyme catalyzed reaction at relatively low potential values, which is one of the goals we wanted to, to achieve. The second strategy. The second strategy implies a functionalization and reduction with carboxymethyl cellulose. Carboxymethyl cellulose, CMC, which was previously oxidized with sodium judate, and further reductive alkylation with sodium borohydrate to form this kind of hybrid nanomaterial. This hybrid nanomaterial with uh, carboxymethyl cellulose, CMC, is a um, highly soluble linear polyanionic glucan with good biocompatibility and it has been used previously as a graphene dispersant. So this, this um, highly soluble hybrid derivative can be easily dispersed in water, in solutions, yielding dispersions that were stable at room temperature for several months. And they were used as a coating material also of glassic carbon electrodes on which tyrosinase was covalently immobilized using carbodiamide chemistry. Similarly to that occurred with PAMAN hybrid derivatives, a partially complex structural morphology was observed in this uh, uh, scanning electron micrography as a consequence of the multipoint attachment of CMC chains on the surface of the graphene oxide nanoshoots. And this provokes the folding of these uh, nanoshoots. And this is the topological analysis by atomic form microscopy showing that um, mm, attachment of the aminopropyl triethoxycylane to graphene oxide nanoshoots did not provoke any significant variation of the, in, the, in the morphology of the nanomaterial, but on the contrary, there was a significant change in the morphology of nanomaterial upon the covalent attachment of CMC. Yielding platelets with uh, fractal-like structure at the edges and some pendant structure with white type shape. So, the final strategy I want to show you is the, it's a little more complex. 
is the silanization with mecatropopyl methoxysilane in order to provide the nanomaterial with reactive thiol groups, on which go nanoparticles of approximately 20 nanometers were attached through the well-known chemisorption processes, and this gold nanoparticle we use as anchoring points for the attachment of a monothiolated destran derivative of low molecular weight, yielding this hybrid structure, which was also used as coating material for electrodes in order to immobilize the enzyme thyroxinase. And obviously, well, this are transmission electron microscopy of this uh, hybrid nanomaterial showing that uh, gold nanoparticles, showing that these gold nanoparticles were homogeneously distributed along all the carbon basal planes, but as expected, the degree of coverage was very low. And this is an important advantage. I want to emphasize this because the silanization of the graphene oxide, the modification with silanase group of the graphene oxide is very important because in that way we don't cover all the surface of the carbonaceous material with the polymer. And then we preserve the conductive and electronic properties of these carbonaceous hybrids. This is important in order to make further applications. The thyroxine biosensors prepared with water-soluble graphene polymer hybrid derivatives exhibited an excellent electrochemical electrolytical behavior for cathicol with fast responses achieving 95% of the steady state current within five, six seconds after the addition of cathicol. And you can see here the very large range of linearity achieved with the hybrid material composed of reduced graphene oxides and CMC, which is interesting because CMC is an insulating polymer. This is due because enzyme molecules are cross-linked between or with the hydrophilic CMC chains. And it provokes the structural stabilization of the enzyme molecules, preventing the naturation and modification with the generated benzo benzoquinone molecules. And this is because the electroanalytical behavior is so good. But obviously, as expected, the best electroanalytical behavior was achieved with the configuration bearing gold nanoparticles. This is because of the presence of these highly contacting gold nanoparticles, but also to the fact that in this case, the attachment of the polymer, of the destron polymer, was only on one point at the gold nanoparticles and not on the carbonaceous surface as occurred with the PAMAM and the CMC derivatives. And this is because the analytical characteristics were so good. And I'm going to pass to the final example I want to show you. This is an example that we are very proud of it because it implied a large collaboration with a lot of people. And this is the use of the P19 RNA viral protein as a selected capture receptor for the determination of micro RNAs in cancer cell and tissues. Micro RNAs, I'm going to say MIRS from now, it's, it's easier are a type of endogenous, single-stranded, small, and non-coding RNAs, which plays very important roles in many biological processes. Besides their well-known biological action, there are increasing evidence of the important role of these MIRs in the initiation and progression of human cancers. Also, they are also related to other different uh, human diseases, but we are interested in particular in human cancers. Mm -hmm.